Holly, great to see you again. I'm really looking forward to, to having you up in Toronto for a Collision. I know you're going to talk about Web3 and what that means for advertisers and brands. But before we get into that, could you just share a little bit of an overview about Blue Focus, how it's, what kind of company it is, how it's different? And I, I thought I saw you changing your brand to Plus Company. Maybe if you could just touch on that a little bit as well. Uh, it, it's not. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. I still remember the good time we had in Lisbon. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish we can go back there anytime <laughs> soon. Yeah, um, and, and then go back to your question. Uh, it's not rebellion. What we did in the last uh, almost two and a half years since we met last time is basically we, we were looking uh, for a way to also bring the, the international side of business for Blue Focus to also go public outside China. So we tried with spec and uh, a couple of other means, but then consider everything going on, including pandemic, including some of the, uh, as you imagine, geopolitical uh, uncertainty, mm -hmm. uh, we chose a different route. So what we did is basically we introduced a strategic investor, actually to be more exact is a private equity consortium. So that's between CVC, who is a pretty prestigious private equity global one. And then they partner with, CDPQ. CDPQ, as you know, is uh, the, kind of the government fund uh, with Quebec, mm -hmm. uh, considered again a legacy in Canada. So they formed the consortium uh, and then uh, took a majority share of the international side of the business. Mm -hmm. So that part of the business is now labeled as plus, but Blue Focus is still there um, as, a, as a global brand to answer your question. Yeah. Thanks, Holly. And can you give us a bit of an overview of what your vision or purpose for setting up Blue Focus um, from the offset was? Right. Uh, yeah. As you know, Blue Focus actually, it, it was a homegrown business, uh, marketing, communication, branding service business uh, from China in China. Right. So it had um, probably over 25 years history now. So at the beginning, it was just organically growing as a PR company. Mm -hmm. And then when it went public in 2010, uh, you know, it had capital. So like most of the communication company, they started to basically do the acquisition, right? Mm -hmm. So first we acquired a bunch of agencies in China. And then uh, around, I think the time about 2013, around that time, 12, 13, 14 ish, uh, Blue Focus formed the strategy called Go Global and Go Digital. Mm -hmm. So that's when we started to basically go shopping outside China. And, and as you know, we acquired a bunch bunch of agencies that also invested in, in some agencies uh, around the world. So uh, before the deal happened with uh, CVC and CDPQ, actually on the international side of business, we have roughly uh, 2,500 employees in about 12, 13 countries. Uh, I mean, Canada actually is one of the biggest ones. You can imagine we have COSAD, Vision 7 Media, sitting in a bunch of agencies there. And then the services we're offering, um, just, you know, no different from other marketing communication agencies, you know, anywhere from uh, PR, you know, to creative, to event planning, to especially later days, data, right? Data related, like a performance related. And also we acquired a design agency in San Francisco. So it was a pretty interesting and a dynamic business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think earlier on you had a question about how different is Blue Focus in general. Maybe let, let me address that one so we can move on to uh, other uh, business and Web3 related question. Uh, so if, if you just hear the story about Blue Focus and uh, uh, look at where it was 25 years ago and where it was three years ago and where it is today. By the way, Blue Focus still a significant shareholder of plus company. So the business collaboration is still there. I mean, by no means it will change, right? We still like belonging to, to, the, to, to the same family. Um, I think two things may be differentiating. Uh, the first thing, as it's obvious, it's China rooted, right? I mean, uh, it, it, of course, China is, uh, having some difficulty these days, uh, again, by not getting, getting too political, talking about what's going on in Shanghai or whatever. I mean, uh, I mean, pandemic is, is a strange thing, changed the whole world, uh, still changing the world. Uh, but put that aside, uh, China is still, let's say, uh, one of the biggest consumption market uh, in the world. Uh, actually, data shows, I think I mentioned it probably even two, three years ago at the uh, web, web Summit. So basically, if you're looking at the business side, if you look at 2B, right, the business side, uh, I think even two, three years ago, the Chinese enterprises business already occupied 
you know, more than, 50, uh, you know, more, more seats on the global 500 uh, companies, even more than US. So the business is really emerging, the enterprise is 2B side. And then you look at the consumer side. Um, I think it was the number probably came from McKinsey, but by 2030, the consumption power of Chinese consumers will be more than the combination between European and North America. So this is a huge consum consumer market. So that's the 2C side. So if you look at that, China, nevertheless, it will be, it has been already, but it will continue to be a very interesting and a phenomenal you know, uh, power in the, the, in the whole con consumption market. And then we do service for brand, brand serve the market. So that's obvious, the China side. That's one differentiator. The second one, which is very related to today's discussion is uh, if you know Notice the name change around 2015, we actually add a word intelligent. So Blue Focus used to be called Blue Focus Communication Group. And then I think we're probably 16. Uh, after 2016, after a bunch of acquisition, especially in the mobile uh, advertising platform, you know, we actually switch more towards Blue Focus Intelligent Communication Group. So the, the I intelligent was add on. What does that mean? It means technology, it means data. It means you know all those future enabled services. It also means that in a way, Blue Focus as a company will be more briefly than ever to embrace the new models and new tech in this world. I think that probably is a very natural leeway to what we're going to cover today here. Yeah. So Holly, at Collision, you're going to be speaking about Web 3.0, which is one of these topics that I feel for a lot of people uh, maybe it's difficult to wrap their heads around NFTs, crypto, um, blockchain. How would you define Web 3.0? Um, I, I guess we can all find so many ways of defining it. You know, what is web one, two, three, uh, some actually defined by the years and some actually, you know, defined by, you know, what internet can do for you. For example, like a web, um, 1.0, it's, it's, it's read only, right? So basically it's a read only internet. And then we're talking about 2.0, people talking about, you know, you, you can read and write, you can help to, 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 uh, basically uh, construct it, right? And then in a certain extent, uh, when we talk about Web3, are you guys doing okay with the yeah. uh, camera? I'm just checking okay. the, uh, the microphone there for a split second. Yeah, no, we can hear you perfectly that we're picking that up. Okay, cool. Uh, and then people talk about Web3, which means you can contribute more, you know, you can, you can own it. I mean, so that's also a way to define it. And also people define by the product, like, you know, if you look at point one, uh, sorry, 1.0, it's emails only. And if there's 2.0, you know, they're looking about, you know, especially the mobile side getting to that. And then the mobile app getting to that. Um, and then three, it could be, I think Web3.0 web, web will be, um, it, I, I won't call it a revol revolutional, but it actually it has a lot of revolutional meaning. In it. Mm -hmm. Basically, you know, uh, it become more direct, right? Uh, directly engaging people, involving people. Um, it, it probably is more based on protocol, on programming, uh, than human, uh, you know, intervention there. Uh, and it encourage, basically encourage more participation, right? Mm -hmm. um, so in long run, I, I do believe this is something that's going to impact uh, both the culture as well as the economic models. Uh, and, and then, you know, as one of the things we're probably not going to cover too much today uh, is about the governance model, about mm -hmm. many things, about, about you know, uh, individual, about uh, organization, and even in a way about the society, right? So I think it, I think it, it is in a way very uh, revolutional. Um, and, and if you look at the period of each web, one, two, three, it's roughly about 15 years-ish. Mm -hmm. um, so if we look at Web 1, probably it's anywhere from early 90s to 2005. And then after that to, to early 20, it's the Web 2. And then I think if you look at that, uh, we're still at the very early stage for Web 3.0. So a lot of things still need to be defined and will be further polished all, along the way. So Holly, with, with Web 3, there's going to be a lot of uh, opportunity. What would you say are the biggest advantages for brands and marketers in this space? You know, it's interesting. I think that so many people, uh, including those celebrities, including brands, uh, try to uh, have a touch on that. But, um, well, I'll give you an example. I was talking to one of the, uh, the, the movie star in Hollywood about 
now it's the, the end of April, so about three months ago. So basically, I said, you know, hey, would you be interested? Actually, two things, right? I said, would you be interested doing, for example, an avatar of yourself mm-hmm. on internet? And the second thing is, do you would you be interested to create some NFT? And then she's like, oh, sure, I would love to, but how? And then she's like, actually, we had this discussion in Beverly Hill, basically, right? Right there in Hollywood, where she's like, you know, I have these friends and that friends, you know, either from NBA or from how they all want to do that, but nobody knows how to do it, right? And, and that was three months ago, three and a half months ago. And then lots of development happened in the last three, four, three, four months, right? And then we see brands started to, to issue NFT. Um, we, we see actually there's the virtual space you can play with. For example, you can do a virtual concert or, or um, uh, you know, I think it was, did, is that, Decentraland had the first uh, fashion week, right, on, on, on their space. And then, y- y- so you see lots of things already happening with brand. Uh, and, then, and then with celebrity, uh, without mentioning all, you know, all the names, we see actually from both sides on the investment side, there actually there's some NBA stars, some sports star, as well as the movie stars get into investing in this field. And then some of them started to mint their own NFT. You know, put on open sea and started to 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 push for it, and and then you know the price, the cost level is it, fluctuating a lot, right? So I think I think people uh, are testing water with that, and and then we do have the luxury of uh, number one uh, time, number two in a way also the funding to play with them. By the way, I'm sitting here in Silicon Valley. Let me let me tell you, this is such a rich industry. I mean, they do not lack money. I mean, you you can see funding pouring into those projects but it needs the ability really to judge a good project from a bad one and also time will will tell so i think you know at the end of the the, the, is that sustainable business or is that sustainable nft time will tell yeah so we're still again at at a very early stage so holly you talked about these 15 year intervals from web 1.0 to 2.0 to 3.0 and how we're now at the very early stages of web 3.0 and so you're talking with brands all the time helping them position themselves for the future so I'm just wondering, what type of advice are you giving to these people to ensure that they are properly set up for the future of Web 3.0? Yeah, um, we see some brand actually working with, uh, for, for example, uh, some of the gaming. You know, you, you definitely you probably heard the word about like, a, you know, uh, DeFi and then, you know, GameFi, things like that. And then everybody is, is trying to move from the, the original game to like a blockchain game, things like that. But but nevertheless, how the format changed, brand can still work, for example, with those gaming company in the in the game world. Right. So we see actually some collaboration happening on that side. Uh, and then we also see, for example, uh, they get into virtual space. Uh, do you guys know a Chinese company called Baidu? They they they, they like the yeah the Google of mm-hmm. I hate to say they're like the Google of China, but you know so something like that. Yo, so Baidu launched a virtual space called the Xi Rang. Xi actually means hope, right? Mm-hmm. Rang actually means soil. So basically, Xi Rang means like the. Uh, Hopefully the the the, the, so, the soil for hope, right? So uh, it, it's a virtual space. So what we did, we focused it. We actually like a, a bought bought a, a piece of land or a piece of you know some some space on that, and then we we build a virtual shopping street. So back to your question, um, those brands came to work with us, saying you know it's just think about it, it's just visualize a, a shopping street maybe on Fifth Avenue, right? Or maybe Huai Hai Lu in Shanghai or whatever in Tokyo, right? So those brands came to work with us and said, can we open a virtual store on this shopping street? And we did. So basically you see those brands get into those virtual space and try to promote their product. And then one thing particularly interesting, I think again, this is not a new concept, but it will also flourish so well in web 3.0 generation is about this kind of omni-channel. The omni-channel interaction, right? So, so, so basically, you have the online or virtual. Online is not again not a new world, but but basically in the in the virtual world, in this shopping street, you get people come to shop with you, or at least get into stores to see the different different uh, different products, and then they can they can do two things, right? For example, if you get into a Gucci store, you probably can get a Gucci virtual product where you can use potential in all the virtual spaces. So if you play a game in 
uh, sandbox or somewhere Decentraland, you can wear go back handbag. It's a virtual Gucci bag, right? Or if the next day you go to some other places, virtual space to again date a person, you know, you can bring that back too. So you can really use that virtual product. And then the other thing they do is basically they link the virtual product in that space with the real product in, mm-hmm. in the store, right? So if you really go to Fifth Avenue, or I don't know what's the name of the shopping street in Toronto, you say, hey, you know what? Last night I saw this on, on your virtual space, then what's the, uh, you know, is that a you know, related product in your store? And then they can give you, you, you can buy the real stuff. So it, it is, you know, the, 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 the multi-dimension experience coming together. And then when I mentioned about the omni-channel, I think what brand can do and agency can do is basically you, you, you basically you collect an, the data from all those dimensions and use it to profile about the consumer and then generate inside the intelligence for the brand. Mm-hmm. So that's the really, you know, the omni-channel experiences, yeah. So Holly, we're seeing brands starting to come into the NFT space. Uh, I think ASICS was the first one that I saw who had a, a virtual shoe that you could buy and then place onto your avatar, which is kind of similar to what you were talking about there. With brands coming on and also brands being set up like, like the Board Ape Yacht Club, which are companies that are, that are now becoming brands, how do you see this craze going on? Do you think it's here to stay or what, what are the next 6, 12, 18 months for NFTs? I think that's a very good question. I, I have to admit, I had my own doubt. Uh, maybe I'm still having my doubt. Right? Yeah. I got a friend uh, who actually invited me to dinner tonight and he he told me to buy the, uh, we call it the monkey, basically the ape. Right? You know? yeah. he, told yeah. me to buy, he told me to, to buy it like uh, two months ago. And, and, and I was like, a, Forget it. And, and then a month ago, he said, you know, because by the way, we we as an LP, we invested in Andreas and, you know, A16Z, right? And he's like, you know, you guys are getting into it. It's a label. Like if you invest in A16Z, all the entrepreneurs like myself look at you like, wow, you guys understand Web 3.0. And then the other thing you you should do to label yourself, understand Web 3.0 is to, to buy a monkey. And then, you know, change your WeChat or Facebook, uh, you know, uh, basically uh, icon into the into the uh, the ape. Mm-hmm. At the time, the, uh, the the floor price for one ape is about, uh, I think, a 100, 105 Assyrian. Yeah. And I didn't take permission. Uh, it's again, yesterday he pinged me again. He's like, you know what? It's 130 now, right? <laughs> so, so I was like, how am I going to tell my board um, that I spent 700k US dollars bought a, J- buy, bought a JPG and to replace my beautiful face, right? So, so it, it, is there weird? I mean, I, I, I can't pretend I really understand everything, but it is happening. And, and then to your question, I think there definitely there are bubbles there, right? To need to be squeezed out. But this is nothing new, you know, from... I mean, probably web one, we we are all kids. We're still in school or whatever. I mean, uh, web two, we're, we're getting into, you know, the business. But there's nothing different from there, right? I still remember early days, you get people just really hanging out with all those PPT without a really, really idea how to run a business. I think I think the same thing will happen with NFT as well as some of the startup with web 3.0. But, but I also believe this is a disruptive creation is that the right english it's it's a, it is a disruptive creation because it's at the intersection among so many things the culture right the economics right the way how business and people organize how we're we going to manage the digital rights right you know in a way i'm also thinking the nft it's a little bit like um gosh i was in europe again last trip was you know, the trip went to, went to uh, Web Summit. So mm-hmm. I, I used to go to Europe a lot, like Italy, Spain, especially, love it, right? And then um, during the Renaissance, so you, you know you know the House of Medici, right? I think they, the, the greatest co- uh, accomplishment or contribution they made is basically in the sponsorship of those art and architecture in the early, early days, right? Why? Because if you look at the artist, I was in Florence and uh, Rome for many, for several times, if you, you, know, you know, just cruising around all those museums, looking at history, because the artists generally would not begin to work until they're paid, when, I should say, until they were paid, right? So it's a very different model if you look at the early days of the Renaissance, right? And then if you fast forward to today, NFT is nothing different from that. 
you know, you need to pay an artist to do the work. If we call it, some of you, they're not really artists, but you need to pay the people to do the work to create. And then they will continuously to, to benefit from the product if, or, 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 the, or whatever we call the project. You know, I think that's, it's the right thing to do. And so, so I think if we look at that, I think NFT uh, will be there. Uh, NFT trading is also a new thing because in the past, if you sell a piece of art, you can only sell it once. Now you can sell it multiple times, right? Uh, I think that's also a great thing. Um, and the other um, part is, again, going back to those brands created uh, create NFTs, you know, you can be a fan of, for example, Adidas or Nike or, you know, uh, those NBA stars. In the past, what, what you can do, you can probably get, buy a pair of shoes, right? Or you, you can go to watch the, watch the game. But now you really can convert those kind of attention or passion into business revenue. Mm -hmm. And then you're participating. Again, going back to the participation side. And I think that's great. And then let's say if someday you don't believe in it anymore, you can just trade it. Or even there's another word in, in, in blockchain. Basically, you can, I won't say you can, you can destroy the blockchain, but there, it, it's just more proactive participation from the fan side, the human being side. I think that's great. Of course, you in due course, lots of the regulations, you know, and, and about trading platform, all those things need to come up more complete. But I, fundamentally, I believe in this kind of a theory, yeah. So when you're thinking about Web 3.0 at these really early stages, and we're doing a lot of learning right now, do you ever think about what does Web 4.0 look like? Will it still follow that same 15-year cycle and sort of evolve at the same pace that we've seen to date? Or is this just sort of a transformative stage where that cycle is going to be completely broken up and we're going to see something completely new in the future? I'll probably leave it to my two-year-old. to. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, he he actually refused to leave the room before you guys get out. He's like, he's like I said, I said, Mama need to kaihui, which means Mama need to be in a meeting. He's like, mm, do not be in a meeting. I don't care about me. So, so anyhow, I, I think my point is, I mentioned about this roughly 15 years, yes, right? 15 to 18 years ish time period. I think we're still at the very beginning. Uh, I, 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 I think, well, in general, um, how should I say it? Basically, um, there will be risk and ambiguity at the beginning, like everything else. So, so at, at this point, it's about uh, no matter for builders or for regulators and for you know uh, you know investors, it's about working together to conquer that. Uh, I probably would not uh, think too much about web for yet. But I do think things will keep evolving itself. It's like uh, several years ago, we'll probably never think about, you know, 3.0, right? In a way, pandemic escalated the whole thing also, right? So, so I was not kidding to say, I will leave that question to my two-year-old because, you know, think about another 10 years from now, he will become a teenager, right? I mean, literally when he was born, he was, I think he was probably only six, seven months old, uh, Definitely less than one younger than one year old. He even couldn't speak. But when he when he see a screen, right? Like if he see you guys there, he the first reaction he's using his hand to touch it. And I have to tell him not all the screens is touch screen. But think about when we grow up, right? I mean, you guys probably be younger than me, but we we need to learn how to use touch screen. It's it is intuitive, but you but it's a new thing. For him, it's natural. He 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 couldn't read, he couldn't speak, but he knows how to move, move things around. Swipe left, right, and then if he watch YouTube, he doesn't read the skip ads, right? But when he see that button, he touch it. So we'll jump into his video. So my point is, yes, there will be to answer your question, and I will let when the time comes, the, the the generation will figure out. Completely agree, Holly. I think uh, the generation of today will be metaverse natives. So they'll just be growing up with that technology around them. With that in mind, what are you saying to your clients now about the metaverse and how are you getting them ready for it? Uh, we actually, for Blue Focus, what we did is we, number one, we formed a, um, a company 100% owned by Blue Focus, by it's called Blue, Blue Universe. Uh, not too creative, but again, it's called Blue Universe. Uh, so we're doing several things there in the Blue Universe, right? So, um, Three angles. Let's think about it. it's about the first angle is about um, about person, or I should say about character. So it's it's who it's the dimension of who, right? The second 
dimension is about um, stuff or object. So it's about what? Mm -hmm. And then the third dimension is about uh, space. I mentioned about this uh, hope soil from, from Baidu, right? So it's about space, it's about venue. Uh, actually, it's about where, right? So think about these three dimensions. Um, so in the blue universe, as again, a startup of blue focus to target this area, uh, what we did, what we, we are doing is basically launching product. Again, product to our industry is the services, right? Launching new product and new service for each of the dimension. So for the who dimension, uh, the, the, the character actually is about avatar. Uh, we, are, we are creating those um, virtual idols or uh, avatars, you know, uh, from scratch. We already launched the two product. Unfortunately, it's in Chinese, uh, but it's like it's actually two different ladies. One is we call the uh, Sister Sue. She came from um, 1400. So, you know, 600, 600 years ago. So, you know, those, those uh, you know, Asian, the Chinese style, but, but basically it, it is a character. I mean, you, you probably can look for it in, 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 on the internet, right? And then another one is a, a lady called Kay. Kay is very modern. You know, she sings, she has half of her face go this way, to very, very modern, very much modern. And then she represents the, 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 the new type of woman. So we actually create this virtual IP from scratch. And right now, um, basically, like it's like a bring up your, your, your little girl, my little boy. You're teaching them, you're educating them, you know, you, you put them on internet, you let them to participate in, in some par, uh, evening party, you know, all sorts of things like that. And eventually, guess what? When they grow up, when they grow up, they can be the sponsor, I mean, the, 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 uh, the ambassador for brand, right? So instead of inviting a real celebrity or movie star or, or NBA star, you can have those virtual idol be your brand ambassador. Guess what? what is good? They won't get drunk. They won't do DUI. They won't have rumors. And then they, they, will, they will behave very well, right? So, so so it is marketing branding services. It's number one, it's about for us to, to market those avatar, those virtual idols. And then it's about let them to help the brand to do the marketing. So again, this is on the um the who, right? The the the, the, the person, the character dimension. On the object or the stuff or the what dimension, uh, we actually uh, create a whole process of methodology to um to help brands create. NFT. I know the, uh, the 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 word should call mint mint NFT, right? So why you I use create is because if you look at the marketing service agencies, um, we actually one hand is about technology, one hand is about creative. So it's not only technically minted; it's about create the storyline behind it, the color, right? The touch and the feel. So we actually. Um, inventing a, a platform help the, the brand or the clients to, to create NFT. And also further on become a digital, um, let's call it a digital asset operation platform. Because once you have an NFT, you also need to help your clients to operate it, right? So, so that's on the, 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 um, the object or the, the what side. And the, the, the third dimension, as I mentioned earlier, is about the, the space, the venue, the where. So uh, again, you know, uh, the, the shopping street, the virtual shopping street I, I, I talked about, we also bought a piece of land uh, on decentral land, probably will do similar thing, you know, do virtual shopping uh, on, or online event, right? And then there's also the intersection, for example, we can uh, use our virtual idol to do those uh, video streaming e-commerce. If you guys know what I'm talking about, you know, those people keep talking in the past and they can sell lipstick, they can sell shoes, they can even sell, I think they can even sell air, whatever, you know, because they have the fair economy there, right? So in the, in the past, it's real human being. In the future, it can also be those avatars, like what I exactly said about the, uh, the brand's ambassador. So these are the three dimensions we are using to attack the, uh, to attack the, 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 the whole world right now. Um, we got a lot of interest from the brands, uh, but I think actually there are more people interested than trying right now. So I won't say we get like a one standard set of the solution. You, you, we are learning all, ourselves. It's like I have been learning every single day in the last four months, right? So, so we are collectively 
evolving and learning and, and also tuning our solution for the brands. Yeah. Amazing. Really interesting stuff. And we're learning just from talking to you and, and hearing what's happening in your world and with the brands that you're working with. So I'm um, really looking forward to hearing more about your thoughts on Web 3.0 at uh, Collision upcoming here. And thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Ali. Thanks so much. Thank you. Good, good to see you guys. Thanks, Ali. Really looking forward to seeing you in Toronto. Thanks again. Bye. Have a good weekend.